Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley and this is My Sweet Perspective where I give my take on all things TV and movie related. And I am back today with none other than Jay from VKJ TV. And we are back to talk about Diara from Detroit, episode five. Are y'all ready to talk about it? I'm about to bring the guest up and we are going to jump right into it how are you doing today jay i'm doing great how are you <laughs> i'm good i can't complain it's sunday it's a brand new week i mean and i'm ready to to get into it what did you think of this week's episode um it was a little slow at first but once the pace started picking up <laughs> hey y'all uh, i was like okay let's go let's go let's go but i, I understood why you know it was pacing and then it just bam just exploded i was like all right great 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 love it so yeah yeah it was a good episode yeah we definitely needed the build up i think right in this right. episode so i absolutely get it hey monique 69 way hey <laughs> i'm definitely going to have to catch the replay okay we'll come on back when you finish it she says hey jay hey, hey. how are Hola. you <laughs> okay, so we can get right into it. So we know um, that DR, DR is through. She's lost all our money. She's brokey broke right now, Jay. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> with the whole gambling experience. So she's going through it. And what did you think about the, the, the opening? So we see her on the couch. She's clearly emotional. She's lost all her money gambling. She feels even further away uh, from finding Ambien. How did this make you feel? Were you were you feeling like Diara in that moment? Did you did you feel the vibes? You know, I was like, oh, for real. Like, yeah, it's been a hectic couple of weeks here. Like, we're not really getting anywhere. So I kind of felt a little defeated along with her. Like, dang, okay, is this is this the end? We're only on episode five. Like, this can't possibly be the end. But I did see the disappointment. I did feel her pain. I felt like, you know, we kind of hit a brick wall here. But I was hopeful. And uh, but she was she was done like she was done. So, I, I mean, how many times have we been there just done after we tried and tried and tried? So I, I definitely felt her pain. Absolutely. And to know that it's really not just about Ambien and losing the money. I think that was the icing on the cake. I think she's finally at the point of okay that didn't work he really did ghost me plus my marriage is over it's done you know what i'm saying like it's a wrap so she's sitting there or standing there rather and she's dreaming of the times gone by right she and swa their dinner dates how much they loved each other and she's ready to take down the command center too she's just completely mm -hmm. over it i give up I give up. Would you give up this easily? What would you do? Because I do have to introduce a game. I almost forgot. Lord oh. forgive me. 
Oh. It is called What Would Diara Do? Okay. So basically, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what we're going to do is in any of these situations, you're going to give me what you would do if you were Diara in the moment. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Cool. So we're going to travel along this journey with her. And whenever I want to know what, what you would do if you were Diara, I'll put this back up. Okay. <laughs> cool. So at this point, would you be ready to give up? Would you be through with it? I mean, with everything leading to a dead end the way that it did, yeah, I'll, I'll be like, man, you know, forget all this, man. Like, just like she ripped everything down and she put it in the box. I was like, all right, I'm done. So so as you said, just to kind of like piggyback off of what she said, she is not only feeling defeated of not finding Ambient, but also just that she she always goes back in her mind thinking about at that dinner, that was the happiest time in her life. And just to not be able to like come to the realization that this is never going to happen again. It's not going to, I'm not going to be as happy in this moment the same way. Again, definitely feeling defeated. So yeah, I would have did the same thing. Get out of here. Don't get, get back here. in the box. Go like, <laughs> yeah, go get out of here. <laughs> I was surprised. Honestly, seeing what we ended up seeing this episode, I was really surprised about mm -hmm. the take of the friends, right? I thought that they would be happy. Like, okay, Diara, you're done with everything. Um, but no, and we'll get to that later on. But I was really surprised at their response. Okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna bring it back up, Jay. We're gonna bring it back up mm -hmm. again. In this moment, sitting outside the pawn shop, <laughs> looking at the ring. You can see that up in the little circle up there. She's looking at this beautiful ring that represents everything from the marriage. And what, what what do you do if you're DR in this moment? Do you go on in that Shoot. Shop? That ring got to be at like at least 20000 25 at yeah. the list, at the minimum $25,000, $30,000. If I'm broke and he broke, hell yeah, I'm going in that pawn shop. Like, let's go. Like, you bounced the check on me. You know what I mean? Like, I lost all the money at the gambling table. Only thing I got left is this ring. Let's go. I don't care about these damn memories. These memories are not paying my bills. Okay. So <laughs> I would, if I was Diara, we going in that pawn shop. Okay. In the pawn shop. Because I still got the car. So I'm driving up to the spot. So, I mean, the car was the most important thing to me because I picked out the rims. I picked out this and that. So I got the car. So I'm good. So the ring is, eh, you know, I'm not going to get emotional about the ring. Give me the money. What would you do? <laughs> I mean, uh... I mean, because at this point, she broke, he broke. She said that was all the money that she had to her name. He didn't right. cancel the check, stop payment. And quite as it's kept, so I don't want her. You know what I mean? At this point, he's moved okay. on. He doesn't want her. So I'm with you. Um, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a take it to them people and get as much as I can for it. Maybe I don't go to the pawn shop, though. Maybe I go to a jeweler in yeah. town. You know what I mean? Maybe I can get a better a better rate that way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Latoya, oh, yeah. how you What's doing? Up? But, uh, okay, but uh, that's not all that was going on in this moment, right? So she mm -hmm. went to the pawn shop, but we see that she is not alone. Mm -hmm. We have a visitor. We have a visitor. Now, when you saw him taking pictures, following her around throughout the episode, before we actually get to meet him, what did you think this was about? I thought he was connected to that Russian dude. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, the first, like, schemish guy we were introduced to was the naked Russian dude, right? So now that he's taken out, this is his partner here, you know, just, like, kind of being, like, okay, on the scene with it. Uh, but then also I'm thinking about um, how um, Big Tank, that's the name Tank, was looking for her also. So I thought he was connected to him as well, you know? So it's either the Russian guy or Tank or they, you know, all trying to find out what she's doing. So before we find out who he is, yeah, that's who I thought he was connected to. Definitely. And I, I didn't know because we're being introduced to so many new characters and they're adding so many more layers and dimensions to the story. I honestly didn't mm -hmm. know in that moment, um, but I was inclined to think it was somebody Greek. It was the Russians. It was the Italians Look, because they didn't talk about the mob being yeah. at Mr. Greek's restaurant. So I'm with you. I, just, I thought he was nefarious, though. I will say that. I, I thought yeah. he was up to no good. So Diara's running wild. She's got errands to run, a ton of things to do. And mm -hmm. so as a part of all this, we find out that Aja is hosting a ball. 
Um, and this is all about the city of Detroit. It's called the Detroit Experience. This is a place for her to get on this list, right? The 35, under 35 in Detroit. Uh, but in the midst of all that, they kind of share a beautiful moment, right? Diara, I think, is probably the most vulnerable so far that we've seen her in this moment with Aja. What did you think of this interaction? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're both on a mission, right? She wants to get in the 35 on the 35, right? And, you know, they're both on this separate mission, separate journey, but... You know, she's trying to do her best to be there for her. You know what I mean? So she is a good friend. Um, you know, they, they're both in like a, a dire place. You know what I'm saying? Of finding purpose, of finding, you know, you know, just kind of accomplishing things again. The y'all was trying to get back to who she was into a better place. And, you know, the young lady, she's very ambitious. So, you know, them being there for each other is a great thing. It's a great um a place to be as far as the sisterhood from what I see. But, you know, Diara just has a way more dangerous <laughs> and crazy <laughs> journey to go on. But she is still trying to be as supportive as possible. So I like it. Absolutely. I did too. I, I liked how she could try to put her stuff aside. I mean, we know it's ever present on her mind, right? She's almost in the middle. I want to call it a crisis almost. Right. Um, but to go out and support Aja and then not only just that, but being in reintroduced to that part of society because that's a world that she shared shared with Swa. Like right. she's back in the hood right now, right? But when she was with him, this is what they did together. They went to balls. And then that being his cousin, we know, listen, that they have to, they ha he has to go to all of Aja's events. Yes. Hey, hey, let's talk about it. Hey, oh, I just said hey to Latoya. Hey, Candy Girl. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Candy love. Um, okay. Okay. Big money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tyra. Hey, y'all. Is this the new show with Claire Huxtable? If so. Now, Tyra, I was in <laughs> DMs asking you if you watched it. You talk about, this sounds like Nancy Drew, but we would love to have you if you want to. <laughs> uh, on board. What up, Tyra? <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. Yes, we appreciate it. Okay, so now DR goes back home. Listen, and it's a lot going on because she's done, but Monty has some new clues. Okay, she finds the spider card. We know Ambien was obsessed with the spiders, um, but she feels like she's got some intel on the next step. She feels like she didn't found out a secret rendezvous place and time, right? They need to be there. So now it's Monty convincing Diara that the search needs to continue. So in this moment, Jay, what would Diara do? Okay. So <laughs> we already talked about how defeated she felt. You know, she was trying to just like give it up. Right. So that's why she made a promise to the other young lady, like, I'll be there. I'm going to support you. I'll make the speech. You know what I'm saying? She was done. She was like, all right, I'm done with this wild goose chase. But now when Mo comes with this information, she's like, mm. so I still want to know what happened to him. You know, if I'm Diara and let's say, you know, uh, homeboy is, is a girl, right? It's a young lady that put it on me. Let's, let's do it like that. <laughs> she put it on me. And I'm thinking about the P. I'm like, you know, I can't, I can't walk away from this. And you just brought something new that's like actually some pertinent information. All right, I'm back in. I would, I would do the same thing she did. Let's go, let's go. Let's, we got five more episodes, so <laughs> let's go. Hey, so Jay, for the master P, that's what I'm gonna call it. For the master, master P, P. <laughs> you're going to all levels and limits, right? <laughs> I mean, if she put it on me, you know. Okay, if I think back. There was one that actually put it on me. Yes, I would go above and beyond to go and find her again. You yes. climb mountains. You you go into abandoned warehouses. I mean, one word, Kegels. So yes, I would. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> I would go above and beyond to feel that again. So yes, I would be just like her. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> I've seen the trailer, but haven't really been enticed to watch it. Is it worth your time? Jay. Absolutely. 
Absolutely, it's worth the time. I mean, if you're into, you know, mystery and solving cases, but at, at the same time with a little hood twist, and a little bit of edge to it, and a lot of comedy in it, this is definitely the one. Definitely the one. Absolutely. I think it's irreverent. It's not what you're expecting, but it's very well written. It's very yeah. well acted. So you can't, even some of the more outlandish things that seem like, girl, be for real you're still drawn into the story. They're doing a great job of telling a story. Yeah, me. on top of that, there are some familiar faces. Morris Ch Chestnut, John Sally, Felicia Rashad. There's some familiar people in there, so it, it definitely kind of like still locks you in, even though you may not know who Diara is and these new actors and all this and that. So definitely. Sure. Absolutely. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Fine, <laughs> I'll watch. It looks like... <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> season. absolutely absolutely okay so now we have the rendezvous point because Adiara is all on board now that all she needed really was a reason and I think in this moment she feels like everything else is crumbling this is the one thing I need to get to the bottom of right oh yeah so we see that but before Monty can get out the house good <laughs> Mr. Detective we remember Mr. Detective right when she came yeah. Order guts out <laughs> in the police precinct talking about, yeah, I, I gave him this um, and I didn't hear back from him. He said, ma'am, it sounds like you've been ghosted. It sounds like you need to go to match.com. And then she was like, F the popos. Uh, Y'all don't like black people. Got oh, yeah. out of the precinct. And now he's at her house because they know the, they have a, a, a dead Russian on their hands. Mm -hmm. uh, she came in talking about a Russian. So now she's on the list of suspects. What'd you think of this moment, Jay? Were you surprised at this? I was. I, I was not expecting to see this guy again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't. I think she just dismissed him altogether. I thought he just played his role. We would never see him again. But yes, I mean, if you come into the precinct talking about a tied up Russian and now we got a dead Russian from this club. I got to put two and two together. You know what I'm saying? And you didn't go to, what was it? Harmony.com. He's like, yeah, I met my wife on Harmony. You should use that. <laughs> right. So but like, F where you met your wife. Yeah. Yeah. Burn, burn bridges. DR didn't yeah. get any, any sympathy. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was kind of like surprised, but I was like, okay, well, they don't have anything yet, but yes, you did mention a Russian. You're the prime suspect right now. You're the prime suspect. The prime mm -hmm. suspect. And so, like, I guess any good person would do, or or I guess any fearful person of being locked up in the Pinta, she decides that she needs to go and dispose of all of the evidence that she has linking her to her night at the SEX club, okay? But before she can get out the house good, Jay, mm. I have to give credit where credit is due. <laughs> and say... You predicted that Mr. Danger, a.k.a. Calvin, had a thing for our good sis, Diara. And it appears you're not wrong because the way Big Meech was <laughs> at Diara, I was like, he about to fold her up. Listen, what did you think of this moment, Jay? <laughs> like, like I said, I mean, come on. Earlier in the season, we seen Homeboy actually... Feel sorry for her. Want to talk to her, give her advice. He cooked her pancakes. Did. Okay, when, when a man cook your pancakes, he feeling you. He always felt you. Y'all just haven't come around to having that conversation or being into that. I think um, the way that danger feels right now is like, oh, she got away because she married Swa, mm -hmm. but now I have a chance to possibly, you know, be with her. The way that I want to, but I've never expressed that I really like her. So I think now is his time to, oh, she's divorced. She's getting a divorce. Let me just be as nice as possible, cook up some more pancakes and say, hey, you know, I'm about to make some more food. And she's just like, uh, you know, such and such and such and such, right? I was like, ah, dang. Like she on her business and he was some like, I want to really get with you. So, you know, it's the, the whole investigation is kind of blocking his way to her heart. Yeah, I totally agree because Diara, we know when she gets her mindset, it's definitely a one track mind. Um, but I, I felt for my guy, right? Because he's like, I, I'm making chili tonight, Diara. <laughs> I'm trying to 
I'm trying to see what's up. You want to come over? Do we need, you know, a repeat? I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to know you, Diara. And I wondered if it was because of the different dynamic, because he is clearly a hood dude and he is involved in some street activities. Yeah. Uh, but with that being said, uh, as he's asking her, if she wants some chili. She's like, can you get those guys? I forget. Don't, don't quote me. Cause I don't remember the name of the crew that's running mm-hmm. their hood or whatever. But the ones putting pressure on Monty's husband, Glock. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Glock from BMF. <laughs> <your best. laughs> exactly. So many ties. Um, but can you can you get them to back off a little bit? I know you're I know you tight with everybody. He's like, no, I'm a sovereign citizen. Basically, I'm tight with myself. Mm-hmm. But we saw that when she got in that car, he picked up that phone. Now, I got to be honest with you. I didn't know who he was calling. I said, is he in on it? Does he know what happened to Ambien? I, I had that thought too. I, I did. I, I did. Again, every time somebody's on the phone and we don't hear who's on the other end, it's like we always going to be suspicious that maybe they're tied to the rushes. Maybe they're tied to Ambien. Maybe they, it's like we don't know. And that's why I love watching this show because it's like they kind of keep you on edge to be like, who is he talking to? What's going on? <laughs> Exactly. I absolutely felt that too. Up, uh, <laughs> pancakes are very good, Jay. <laughs> Monique says, shoot, I need someone to cook pancakes for me. <laughs> Listen, and they were silver dollars. I thought that was so cute. Hey, EJ. What's up, EJ? <laughs> I'm talking about pancakes because I'm hungry. Yeah. Go cook them. <laughs> like, listen, can we do X, Y, or Z? And of course, we don't hear who's on the other side of the conversation. So it does leave us wondering for most of the episode. Right. While Diara's Renee and going to expose of the little evidence she has, Monty again found that a camera was missing. He has the little, you know, um, I guess disposable camera. And so she tracks down the place where you still get real pictures developed, right? And so right. in exchange for grandpa getting to fill on her booty, <laughs> he is going to show her. <laughs> The last set of photos that Ambien brought in. What you, what'd you think of this interaction? <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. Again, another hilarious scene. You know what I'm saying? She's like, listen, I see there's nothing in these pictures, man. But uh, if you want to touch on my booty, you're going to have to give me some more. <laughs> so he's like, uh, uh, well, uh, you know, I told the boy, you know, he was lonely. I told the boy to use his D <laughs> for, for whatever purposes. And then he pulls out what he pulls out. And then after he pulls it out, she's like, oh, all right. And then he's like, yeah. <laughs> so That got to be worth a, a booty tuck, a rub. It definitely was. <laughs> Both <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> like, you dirty old man. But we did get some information here. And I thought, again, that this would be, again, more of what Diara needed to continue her search. Because in that... Uh, there was a framed picture of their date where they went to the escape room. Uh, and like Monty said, it's cute. It's weird for a first date, but it was very, very cute. What did you think about the fact that he got a picture framed of them from their first? Yo, this is confirmation right here. Like if nobody believed, Moni, you definitely, I mean, yeah, you, you called it a case, but now this was like pure evidence that what she is saying is real. Like she really needed this to be like, all right, we got to really get back on it now because this man really loves me after the first date, which was five dates, right? <laughs> right. They were on third date. So they did right. each other biblically. That was their arrangement. Yeah. Right. And she talked about the escape room and how great it was. And they finished it in 15 minutes and, you know, it was just a great time. So it wasn't just the D it was the whole experience of being with him. And that's another reason why she is just really like, yo, I really need to find this guy because I think, honestly, after this whole divorce and her moving back, like this was the greatest refresher for her. This was like the greatest opportunity to get back to some type of level of love and affection. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure Swa was not too nice with this whole thing, as we've seen in past episodes. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely feeling love from Ambient. And this, hey, I was happy to see it. I was like, yo, this is great. This is great. She's back on it. 
you know, they say you should be Delulu. We should all keep a little Delulu. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I love that because she kept saying all through the first couple episodes, but he's in love with me. Look at him. He stopped doodling because he was in love with me. <laughs> and so right. now, I mean, maybe he was on his way to being in love. Now, listen. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Listen, booty, 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 rocking everywhere. everywhere. Bounce, <laughs> love, new booty. <laughs> he was he was definitely trying to get that squeeze on because, like Jay said, he didn't tell the young man um, whose name is apparently Chris. Yep, I've been calling the man Ambi in this whole time, uh, aka Deontay, mm-hmm. aka Chris. Uh, but yeah, he needed to use that peen before he loses it. So. Mm-hmm. This is what who Danger, a.k.a. Calvin, was talking to Velvet, who is apparently the female gang leader, right, of the crew yes. in the hood that's putting pressure on everybody that basically runs their hood in Detroit. Uh, and they run deep. I mean, she's cooking for him. She got the Tupperware, talking about bring my Tupperware back, talking about she bought him his first taste, a Kootenanny. <laughs> I mean, you know, they went all the way back. And we find out that someone named Tate is missing. Now, we're not introduced to Tate yet, but I wrote it down and put a little exclamation point next to it because I think that's going to be somebody that we'll be hearing more about as the season goes on. But what did you think about this interaction? What do you think about this new character, Velvet, or V, as he calls her? Well, when I saw that red wig, I was like, Red Velvet. I love Red Velvet, Kate. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, this is definitely auntie. This is definitely, you know, like Supreme Queen, Queen B. She's running the show. And, you know, she's like, listen, I got to remind you, man. You know what I mean? So when she revealed that, she paid for his first, you know, experience with a woman. It had to be an older woman. So I was kind of like, <laughs> he was like, you paid her to do that for me? So she had to remind him, like, listen, you know, I got you in the pocket. So just make sure you do what I'm asking you to do. Or, you know, your whole independent thing is going to be pretty much over. So, you know. You still there? Uh-oh, I think she froze, guys. Yeah, so, you know, Red Velvet, Red Velvet Cake. Let's see what happens next. Uh, but yeah, we, we're going to find out exactly who you're talking about and uh, see what happens next. But I think he's definitely a key factor when it comes down to um, bringing this thing around, you know, as to why Mo's husband is, you know, doing some things in the car for these unscrupulous people. She will be back, family. And until then, what do you guys think about Red Velvet and Danger? Do you think Danger is going to? <laughs> Do you think Danger is going to get your girl Diara? Is he gonna, you know, really help her out with this conversation with Red Velvet? I do. I I think okay. that, like she said, it's it's basically quid pro quo. So I think if he enlists his crew to help find Tate, because yeah. like she said, you're gonna be recruited if I'm not able to find him in whatever time. I think. If he does that for her, she'll do this for him. I definitely think it'll be kind of a fair exchange, ain't no robbery. You know what okay. I mean? Because mm-hmm. she's she's clearly got the manpower and she's got the ability to ease up the pressure. Now, I don't think it's going to waive that, what was it, $50,000? Oh, yeah. yeah. But it might take some of the pressure off Monty and her husband. I was yeah, honest- maybe. Oh, I was going to say, maybe it's going to extend the time period as to when he's going to need to provide that 50K. Uh, maybe it'll stall, stall, stall things for him. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking at least it might get them out of his everyday affairs, right? And having mm-hmm. him do extra tasks that, you know, might not be necessary. Now, listen, honey, mm-hmm. y'all showed up and showed out. I said, okay, it was very much giving. If you remember Whitney Houston's outfit in the bodyguard with the hood, yes, the long, the hood. I was like, okay, <laughs> Looking good. So I was like, okay, got a little cleavage going on, you know what I'm saying, with little eight cups there. I like it. <laughs> I wasn't even mad at it. I said, listen, she is on her way or actually arriving at the ball, um, mm-hmm. the Detroit experience for Aja ready to give her speech first because you know immediately after this we have the rendezvous to get to and so of course she's there looking all around and 
we know she's going to see Swa there. I mean, it's inevitable. It's her, her cousin, his cousin's event. So what did you think about her interaction there? The kind of rushing through everything, trying to get <laughs> to the rendezvous. Like, totally. Yeah. She, <laughs> she was fulfilling her obligations to her, you know, to the cousin of Swa, to her friend, to a great friend. Again, I like the fact that she is trying to juggle this at the same time, get to everything that she found out, everything that she figured out. You know, she has this whole intuition, like she goes into this whole phase of like figuring things out and seeing the images of him doing this and that. And, you know, I, I, I like to see that. So, um, yeah, yeah, I thought... I th- <laughs> I thought she definitely was like, all right, let's get to the speech speech. Like, let's get the speech going. Like, let's do this. Let's do that. I got like, I got places to go, but I'm here to support you, but I'm not trying to push you. But <laughs> can you do it? Can you do it? Can we get it popping? Absolutely. Yeah. And so while she's there again, trying to juggle everything, Mr. T comes over and he's like, look, I done found some information too, right? And so you're like, again, when I thought everything was going down, none of the friends really wanted to support her. He's coming with more evidence and things to look at. And so while they're kind of going through all of that, we see her come up with this theory about the rendezvous point what Chris was doing there. And she kind of maps it out in in only a way that Diara can do, right? She's like, okay, this wasn't um, this wasn't a regular meeting. This was a setup. So she has it theorized, right, that he's gone up, set all these traps <laughs> in this building. Jay, the more I watch this show, I do really think that there is a super secret Negro uh, society that he really is a part of and was recruited for when he was <laughs> young. <laughs> what, do you, well, what do you think about it? Well, you know, again, I still need more information before I make that conclusion. <laughs> but, um, I mean, definitely it's very intricate what he's doing. Like, why does he have pictures of this warehouse? Why does he have pictures of the barbed wire? Why does he have pictures, you know, of him putting up these little, you know, things like in the meat market? Like, what is that about? So he is very detail oriented. So if you're very detail oriented, you have to be some type of spy. You have to be some, you know, like you've been recruited into something where you've learned all of these skills. And this, I mean, like, it's not like you work for, I don't, I don't know, maybe he works for a real estate company. So he's taking pictures of the property, but no, this is way more detailed than that. This is like very intricate and out of place. Like it's weird at the same time, like, yo, okay, how, how do we figure this out? What is he doing? You know, and Diara, she kind of put two and two together. She's pretty good at that. So, yeah. yeah. She actually- is she she can solve some stuff i think her powers for good reason she could solve a lot but yes traps yeah well basically kind of like home alone the way we saw him setting up the traps inside that warehouse that's exactly what it looked like exactly (laughs) okay so meanwhile back at back at the ranch right at the ball a dresser is talking to Aja and he's basically like, Aja, okay, you want this. You're going to build your salon downtown, all of that. But what is it that you want to give back? Like, what about the community? And I really loved this moment. I don't like that she didn't quite have an answer, but I did like the moment because it does beg the question. I think all of us can kind of ask ourselves when we're arriving, right? Or when we're getting to our destination, who are we bringing with us and what are we pouring back? What did you think of their interaction? Well, first off, his story was powerful. Saying how 15 of his family was evicted. Turn around, he arrived, bought the property, bought the building and kicked the slum lord out, right? Yeah. I thought that was powerful within itself to go along with what you're saying. Like, what are we giving back to our community? How are we going to buy the block, right? There's a saying out there, buy the block. Once we buy the block, how to how do we rejuvenate the same place that we came from? So I like how to insert this in here. And yeah, um, <clears throat> I wasn't mad that she didn't have an answer. I was absolutely on the level to say, that's why he's here. To give her the vision that it's not just about her making this list. It's about arriving, getting to a place and then doing something to give back. 
you know what I'm saying, to the community. So I thought it was important for him to talk to her so he can give her that vision and let it, let her know, hey, you can do this when you get to this level and this is what you should do. But in order for me to really like invest in you, you got to understand overall, the overall vision of what we need to do for our community. Absolutely. And I like that too. And it is as a leader important to cast vision, right? And give people something to run with. I do think a lot of times, and, and I'll say, um, she's just been focused on herself and her list. And I think what I finally saw breakthrough in this episode with a lot of the characters, if you notice, they are, while they're good friends to each other, a lot of them are very singular in whatever the goal is, right? And they can seem or come across as self-centered, right? Uh, it's it's about me <laughs> right now. This is about me. This is about me. And so I did love this moment uh, or this episode because we get to see that, no, they really love each other. They love where they're from. Um, and now, like you said, they have a clear vision and especially Aja, she can now run with that, right? And see what's next. And I know she can do a lot of good, honey. Now, listen. Yara had to dip out. She saw it in her mind. She done mapped it out with the pictures. So now she and Monty are in the car. It's one second till rendezvous. <laughs> and when I tell you, I was like, I need y'all to leave. <laughs> Immediately, I wanted them to leave. But we know with Diara, uh, listen, she's, she's going to go through with it. She's not waiting any longer. And so we meet a brand new character. In this, Diara goes into this meeting that Ambien, aka Chris, aka Deontay, was supposed to be having with this woman. Um, he doesn't show up, and so they kind of get into this sparring war. Diara and this woman talking about he didn't show up. Well, you didn't show up. We, this isn't going to work. My answer still no. And Diara's like, "What are we talking about?" <laughs> because again, she has no idea. And the lady's like, "Well, who are you? Well, who are you, ma'am?" And so then they pull out the phones and they both take pictures of each other. And finally, Diara is like, I got to go. OK, we got to go, Monty. Let's go. Let's go. But before she can leave, we see three three bodyguards. Now, what was your thought of this interaction? Who do we think this woman is? Man, like <clears throat> that's the mystery. That's the question. Who is this lady, man? Like, <laughs> so again, we go back to the spying, you know, him being a spy. But at the same time, I think this was a deal that went wrong. So he's making deals now. Okay, what is the deal about? Who is this lady? Does she own real estate? Does she, you know, ha she has something that he wants. So he's meeting up with her to get to negotiate a deal. So I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to think about, okay, what could she possibly have that Chris wants? that is very significant to who, who he's working for or what he does. Mm -hmm. So I like how they're giving us these little crumbs and they're very little, very <laughs> little crumbs. Yes. Yeah, so like, who is this lady? Like, it just makes me want to watch it even more. It makes me like, yo, okay, I got to see the next episode. What the heck is this about? Who's this lady? And then these guys are running after her, after them. And then they go and follow the little breadcrumbs that he, Chris left. Yeah. So, yeah. And this I is, this felt, is I knew it was a meeting for something, right? But yeah. I honestly got the impression that Chris was trying to set them up. And and mm -hmm. I, I don't, but again, I don't know. Are they the mob? Are they the Italians? Are they, are they the Greeks? Are they Russian? Like, who right. is sponsoring all of this foolishness? And what could we really be talking about? Is there really another Deontay? Is it like a, some sort of trafficking thing? I had all the ideas. So, I right. mean, only time will tell because like you said, they are piecemealing us with this. And so oh, yeah. the ladies have to run out. Okay. They're out of there. Uh, <laughs> dirty and all hair left sideways up and down. <laughs> Um, and they're running and immediately we hear this voice that says, come on, get in the car, get in the car. And they're like, uh, yeah, no, because who are you? Uh, and then we hear gunshot or we hear blicky shots ring out. Uh, and so finally they jump in the car and we discover who this is. This is the same man that's been following Diara around town. This is detective Elias. Well, 
former detective. Right. Retired. Eli. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They say mm-hmm. you're young to be retired. DR said fired. <laughs> right. <laughs> So what did you think of that interaction and the car ride and everything that he kind of broke down saying he was on the case all that time ago? You know, he's been investigating things. She's in over her head. Um, what would you think of that? Was that a word of warning? Um, what would Diara do? Yeah. So the interaction was uh, informative and funny at the same time. Um, <laughs> you know, he was trying to give them a warning for real. And and it, it was on top of these people chasing after them. You know what I mean? So it's like, you got somebody chasing after you, the blick, you know, the straps is pow, 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 pow. Get in the car. I'm trying to tell you, like, don't even do this. And, you know, they just kind of dissing him because he didn't do as good of a job investigating this almost 20 years ago. Damn. So they basically be a disrespectful to this man, even though he saved their life. I'm like, what are y'all doing? How y'all gonna disrespect this man? And he just tried to save you. You know what I mean? Uber rating zero. <laughs> you don't get a good Uber rating. Right, right. <laughs> like you're the worst, you're the worst Uber driver ever. And it's like they just disrespected this man. And like, how you gonna do that? And he saved your life. Like, no respect at all. No respect. No, no but respect. Rodney Dangerfield. I get no respect. I get no respect. Take my wife, please. Right? So <laughs> you ain't know I knew about that. <laughs> but, I know you know about Rodney. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But I'm just saying, man, it it was it was pretty bad. But again, okay, thanks for the information. Whatever, dude. Can you take me to this function that I need to get to? Because I gotta get back to that and do this speech. So again, that's that's why I like this show. Because the unexpected is always happening, right? Them disrespecting him, him saving them, right? These guys are chasing after them. Who is this lady popping up talking about? She said that Chris is a, what she said? He was a, a thief or, or something. She said something disrespectful. A man, honey. She said he was con a, man. a con man and a scammer. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. A scammer. That is a, a, a clue because now we see somebody outside of the Yarvis group actually describing a different type of Chris that she doesn't know. Yeah. So is he a con man? Knowledge of him. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, it's about to say it. her. Yeah. Because I, yeah. I do, I'm thinking double life. I am thinking, mm. I'm thinking the professor was right, but yes, TJ. Yeah. A ton of twists and turns. I think that's why we love it. Hey, Breeze. Hey, Breeze. What's up? What up? Diara would betray her people. I don't so I don't think so. I think Diara is a woman of her of her word, and I think she's about her people. So up, Diara? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, we're gonna get to it. We're getting to that next breeze <laughs> <laughs> and the song. Jay was listening to the song, honey, before we got out. <laughs> Recap. What's up, Diara? <laughs> Let's get into it. So they're running late. We know that because now they're in the car with the detective on their way back to uh, the Detroit experience. And T's got a stall because that's the arrangement that was worked out. And so he gets on the mic, honey, and starts singing a cappella, a song about Detroit, honey. A, apparently a cult classic, um, a song that represents a city. OK, uh, and he's singing. And then the DJ that he hooked up with at the rave or at mm. the Smith Club um, brings the accompaniment. OK, I was surprised that Mr. T got a voice on him. He sang down if that was him singing. <laughs> if it was him singing, think? right. <laughs> what you think? Funny. Of- <laughs> it was funny, like very descriptive. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we get down. This is what it is. I'm like, again, once again, these the the scenes are well written and played and, and performed very well, like very entertaining. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys haven't seen it, if you watch it and just pay attention, you will be greatly entertained. So I thought this was entertaining. DJ comes in. I mean, it was it was pretty funny and dope at the same time. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was. And he bought Diara just enough time, honey. Yes. Because 
Here she is. And, you know, I, I almost I know it was about the rendezvous and all that. But I also mm-hmm. felt like this episode was a love letter to Detroit. Mm-hmm. And I love how they took every every moment that they had the opportunity to to kind of breathe new life into a city that so many people had just thrown away. Right. After the mm-hmm. the fact the car factories closed, um, you know, after all of like the corruption that we had seen in their government It was like Detroit. Don't nobody want to go to Detroit. Like she said, you know, they say you can buy a house for a dollar in Detroit. She's like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and she she goes on to talk about, of course, kind of her struggles, because like I said, everyone's kind of self self centered. But she did bring it back to Aja. What an amazing friend Aja was. Um, She also kind of stuck it to Swa, you know. When, so, when someone discards you, throws you away, tells you you're worth nothing, you know, you can prove them wrong. You are worth something. The city's worth something. Aja is going to be everything. A beautiful speech. I was I was moved, Jay. What do you think of of her speech? I mean, <laughs> all over the place, but really good. I mean, definitely sneak dissing. Uh, within the speeches, <laughs> it was definitely, you know, inspiring and conspiring and uh, taking jabs at the same time. But again, as as we've learned about the hour, like she's going to give it to you straight and she's going to clean it up and, and give you a nice package in a Detroit style. You know what I'm saying? Like, here we go. Take it or leave it. It is what it is. But I thought what she said about her friend was definitely touching. Um, and absolutely she, she got her jabs and was like, I'm going to make it anyway, regardless of what you have done to me, Swab, regardless of what's going on and what you think I'm going through, watch, watch, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be fine. We're all going to be fine. And, and yeah, this is, it was a great speech. That part, just like my city, just like yeah. my city, Detroit is amazing. There's so much history in Detroit, musically, mm-hmm. artistically, like, the DJ is sprung low. Oh, absolutely. Talk about beautiful, all the beautiful people winking at Mr. T. Um, I love the Pistons, the Red Wings, and the Lions. I love Detroit. Okay. Give love to he already gave the love to the he already gave the love to the speech. Now, this is a part I didn't understand. After the speech is all said and done, Diara, you know, is excused um from the stage. Monty was there because, of course, they had come in together. She had held her coat and when after she saw the speech and kind of the love that Diara gave to um, Aja, Mani left really sad. What did you think about this moment? I was a little perplexed. I was like, is it because Mani's not in this world and maybe she wanted to be like, maybe she wanted a different life than what she has. What'd you think of it? What were your thoughts? Well, I mean, looking at what we discovered about, the closeness that Monty had with Diara since they were like very young. I think the fact that, you know, Diara was given all this praise and love to Ash that, you know, it, it was like, wait a minute, like I'm supposed to be your best friend. Like we riding this out together. Like I'm getting, I'm letting old dude squeeze my booty for the picture that we got. Like I'm, I'm sacrificing, you know, to 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 get this case for you and, and for us to get this bag. So I think she may have felt kind of bad because, yeah, it's, the love was not going in her direction, uh, even though they went through what they went through. You know what I mean? So I don't think it was a form of jealousy. I just think that she was kind of like down because it was like, oh, man, if that's the way she feels about her. How does she really feel about me? You know, is, is am I just along for the ride? Am I just like feeding her information and is this, it, are we not as close as we used to be? So I think that's what it was. Yeah. And I hope we get to flesh it out later on in the season. Cause I, I think, I think it could be a part of that, right. With just seeing the difference in their friendships. But I also wondered if it had to be, you know, and then the signage and kind of the moment as she's walking out and it's like the gala behind her and she's in sweatpants and her little, I just yeah. wonder, how that all will play out but i hope we get to i hope we get to see more really i mean mm. that's what the old man said that's, that's what, what the old man said if you watch the show tg you gotta watch the show that man was like okay i gave you information I'm trying to get a little squeeze on that's what she offered so that's what it is what it is <laughs> so after diara's speech honey dresser is like this is going up so ajda is set I feel yes. like for her next phase and her next step. So the gala did what needed to be done, I think, for Aja, right? And I think oh, yeah. um, 
I think Diara got a little bit liberated too. Now yeah. they have a moment. They do. Um, and I, I don't know, because I'm kind of like Swa, you really don't care. Like, <laughs> like why are we even, you know, are you okay, Diara? Like, are you are you losing it? Like <laughs> that was some speech. And she was like, Yep, Swa. And she's like, you know, you're my wife. And she's like, No. <laughs> No, I'm not. And I think that was the first time we've heard it definitively, right? The conversation between her and him. No, I'm not your wife. What would what, you think of this interaction? So, again, Swa is the in the moment type of Negro. Okay. If somebody is shining or is looking good, he want to be a part of it. So now you want to come over and ask, are you okay? Now you, you're concerned. You know what I'm saying? After she did her thing. I'm sure he heard the jabs, the little <laughs> like pff, people discarding you. Da, 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 da. And I'm sure he felt it. And that's why he came over and did what he did. But the definitive no, we're not married was a great liberation, as you said, for her. The speech definitely lifted her. For her to say, nah, we're not married, man. Like you did what you did. You still not doing right by me. Yeah. I'm going to be fine. It was a, Hey, now you can't knock me down. You think I'm not going to get up? I'm from Detroit. I'm a fighter. I'm Diara. You know what I mean? You're not holding me back. (laughs) You know what I mean? So this is the question I have for you though, because we do have, I think three more episodes. I think believe it's an eight episode season. Gotcha. Is he going to try to beg her back now that she's announced that she's done? Because we see that a lot. We see that a lot in real life. And, you know, we see that a lot in the movies and the in the TV shows. Because now yeah. she doesn't want him and he, she's unattainable. Is that going to put him back on a path to try to well, get her back? If you think about it, right? Because I don't remember, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember seeing the young lady that he was messing with at that function. Was she there? I didn't see her at the function. Nope. So if she wasn't at the function and they're supposed to be together, maybe that's the reason why he went over. Are you okay? And all this and that. She says no. So it's a possible, it's a strong possibility as to what you say. He might try to be like, hey, you know, let's bring it back together. Things may not work out with him and that other lady. So now he's going to come back and be like, let's put it back together. And most likely she is probably going to solve the case and find him. And we'll find out the truth about Chris. Smith, <laughs> aka Dante, aka the the black spy, the black James Bond, or whatever he is, right? <laughs> but so I don't think al- say it again. I said so many aliases. <laughs> right. And I think, and again, I'm just making this final prediction, just a final prediction that I think she's hold going on, to hold on, Jay. Oh. Oh, and we're oh, gonna wow. make it singular. Final oh, prediction. Okay. You You know, because I kind of put two and two together really quick and I'm not trying to spoil it, but it's just my prediction. I'm thinking that she is going to find out who Deontay, Chris is and all of this and that. Um, Going with with your question, Ashley. Yes, Swa is going to try to get back into her life. And there's a possibility that she's not going to pick Swa. She's not going to pick Chris, but she will pick Danger. Just my prediction. Okay. You heard it here first, folks. That's the prediction. <laughs> uh, by episode eight, okay, let's, let's uh, see what she's not picking Chris. She's going to find him, but she's not picking him. Swa is going to try to shoot his shot to get back in them draws, okay? Um, but she's not going to go with either one. She's going to pick Big Meech. That's how it's going to go. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Okay, guys, so now that Diara has left and she feels liberated and free, honey, she kind of has her Raven moment. If you watch that so Raven, you know what I'm talking about. She would get the vision of the future. She would go. And that's kind of like what we see Diara do throughout the, <laughs> when she gets her little thing. She's like, I remember that woman. Diara mm-hmm. always remembers something two days later. OK, but she said on their date, this was the vision she had of what happened on the date. Total recall. Mm. Chris. 
bends down to tie his Jordan, slips something into that same woman's bag and comes to the date. It comes back to the date with Diara. Now, Diara in this moment is questioning everything again because she says, was this really a date or was I just a cover for whatever secret mission he was on that mm. night? What you Wow. Think? Yeah, so <laughs> that's why I love the writing of the show. It's so many layers to it. And yeah, I mean, if this is what she like remembers seeing, because it doesn't look like, uh, you know how she uh, kind of imagines your boy Chris, Dante, and they're in bed and stuff like that. Like the whole cinematography, the whole gate, the colors change. Like she's in a dream state. So this doesn't look like a dream state. This looks like something that she actually does remember possibly seeing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's going to find out who he really is, though. Like I said with my prediction, I don't think she's going to like what she finds out. Ooh, so it's not going to be good. He's not He's not a secret do-gooder. No, it may be exactly what you said. This whole date was a cover-up for him to maneuver, slide notes, do whatever he needed to do. And she was just a pawn in the game, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, there we go. There we go. A prediction that came true, honey. When she said, do you want to come in? I said, oh, she's dropping them drawers on tonight, Jay. Yeah. And looking back at that thing, and you know, DR is very thin, so I don't think there's much back there to look at. <laughs> but he was looking back at that thing like. <laughs> hey, you know what he's looking at? He, if she don't got no booty, he looking at the small of her back. Oh, that is that part. what it is? Mm -hmm. if she don't have booty, you look at the small. You look at the small of the back because, you know, once you bend that thing over, it all it changes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's true. She said she needed some sleep. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm wondering if Danger going to get a new name. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Danger to... Go ahead, go ahead. Maybe he'll be Soma. Maybe he'll be a muscle relaxer. I don't know. Maybe he'll be, <laughs> I don't know any other sleep meds, Jay, but the Benadryl, Benadryl puts me to sleep. I don't know. Danger going to turn to ultra banger. <laughs> <laughs> going to bang that ass. <laughs> oh, boy. It looks serious. She had that look on her face. I know that look, Jay. That's, that's that. What's that look? That's that come on and get it. Look, I, 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 yeah. I've, seen it before. I've seen it before. Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> moving mm. right along now an, another new character like i said they're dropping new characters left and right this is somebody we know from a million other shows and movies um i can't give you his name because i, I didn't look his name up but um he he typically plays a bad guy but in this mm. one he appears to be some boss and then this is oh boy big boy what's his name jay you know him tied up in the saran wrap down there who is that oh big tank Big tank. Yes. And so basically the man is questioning him, like, who is this woman? OK, she's problematic. She's in the way. Not she's a loose end, but basically she's a loose end. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Questioning him and this man. We know he was the worst investigator ever. He followed her for two days and still don't know anything about her. Were you surprised in this moment about what was happening or what was about to happen with this bobcat? No, nah, I wasn't surprised at all because, you know, this guy was super sloppy. Big Tank was super sloppy. Like, he had no idea. You know what I mean? He's not getting the answers. So, you know, if you don't give the gangsters answers, man, it's going to look like you're part of the problem, man. You know what I'm saying? So this big skinzilly head has to go. You know what I'm saying? If you're, part of the, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Huh? So it's time for Big Tank to become... Big Mac, you know what I'm saying? Big meat. Uh, just to get him out of here. Jay, he didn't have to do him like that, though. He did not have <laughs> to do him like that. So, of course, he questions the man. The question, the man has no answers. And so uh, he, Big Boss gets in the Bobcat and is like, hey, guys, don't laugh at me. It's been a while since I've driven one of these things, you know, because <laughs> you know, they be putting people on the concrete. Anyway, yep. he gets in that Bobcat. And when I tell you he crushes this man's head, Mm. I was like, they're not going to show it. They're not going to show it. They're not going to show it. This is BET Plus. They are not going to show that. When I tell you they showed it, we didn't see splatter. Thank the Lord. But we we got the picture. The crushing. Trauma. 
traumatized. <laughs> and so but he's look, out. Look, if they show him full frontals of Russians, come on. You know they're going to show <laughs> have mercy you're right about that and they did do that <laughs> right Lord. but yeah that was so that was really the episode i think this was the very last scene and as he walks away he's telling his mafioso fellas look yeah. she's a problem we need to get to the bottom of it mm. yes yes tg i know what you mean <laughs> they will sleep with the fishies if they cross the light exactly That's right tg swimming the fishies you know, I just hope someone does their real due diligence and knows that Diara is not who they think she is. But okay, we do this every week. It's become a custom now, right? You have to tell me your rating of this episode. Now, in the beginning, you said, you know, it wasn't quite your favorite. It started out slow. But overall, one, out of from one to 10, what's the rating for episode five? Episode five, I'm gonna give it a strong seven point five. Okay. I'll give it a seven point five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely and that's give just it a seven point five. Slow start. Not a not a ton of action. Yeah, it wasn't a ton of action, but when it did pick up, it picked up. So yes, we we have to, you know, get kind of used to the build up. You know, we're used to the powers and the BMFs, and when episode five comes, it's supposed to be a whole lot of bang, bang, boom. Bada boom, right? But again, this is the hour from Detroit, not power. So again, just a whole different pace. But when it did pick up, I liked it. And you know, everything in between, a lot of funny moments. I'm waiting to see where is Felicia Rashad. Come on back. We I want you I want you to come back. Hopefully next episode. But yeah, 7.5. Yeah, that's that's what I'm giving it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for that. Yeah, Brees. I did not think he was gonna do it. <laughs> I didn't think. Seven and a half is fair. Yes. Okay. So I'm I'm probably gonna give it an eight because I love when people um represent where they're from. And I just this is gonna mean a lot for Detroit. Like I I just I'm excited for kind of the rebirth of Detroit. Listen, her speech got me excited. Like I love a comeback story, I love an underdog, and so I loved that. I did. I felt like this episode was an ode to Detroit, and I, I hope that it serves well. I am looking forward to the rest of the season. Y'all know I love this season so far though, Jay, this is one of the better things that I've seen 2024 so far. So, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I can agree with that. It's, it's way different than what I usually watch. <laughs> and because you pretty much introduced me to it and shared it with me, I of course had an open mind and I'm, I'm very satisfied with this recommendation. So kudos to you on the recommendation. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you. For real. Good job. Good job. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate you being down to do it because I know it is something different. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the reviews. And I thank you so much for coming every week. I'm going to give you the floor, though, Jay. And you can tell the people what's going on this week. Sure, sure. Well, again, thank you for having me. Uh, This is always fun. This is, again, a really good show. I'm enjoying it so far. So thank you again. So family, as you know, we have the new show called Handle the Truth. So last night till the morning, we did a four-hour session. A lot of great information in that. Super fun. Asking a lot of detailed personal questions. So if you like to get into the other YouTubers business, then watch that. <laughs> but it was definitely a lot of fun. Um, so we just did the aura tomorrow, Monday, look out 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to bring you the exclusive picks, final predictions for BMF episode seven. Again, we covered episode six. Make sure you check that out. Of course, I asked Lee, you know, she was hosting that one. God bless her on that one because, okay, you'll find out how I feel in that. Uh, So we have that. And then Ruthless Roundtable this Wednesday. Come through this Wednesday. It is, uh, we're recapping and having a live discussion on the final episode for season four. We may have some celebrity guests show up. So if you're into Tyler Perry Ruthless, definitely tune in. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you know when we upload and when we go live. And then we will be back with BMF episode seven of season three. And I'll be hosting that one. And we're going to have a whole lot of fun. Hopefully it will be better. And here's what I found out, Ashley. I found out that 
your boy, Russell Orsby, a.k.a. Charles Wilson, <laughs> Charles, Charlie, uh, Charles Flannery, is actually host, uh, not hosting, he directed episode seven. So we're going to see how this goes. You know what I'm saying? Russell, not Charles, okay? Russell is, is directing, okay? So, Okay. I, I know. I liked him. I liked him in what is it, Lincoln Heights? I liked him in okay. that. He was he was a he was a good man in that one. Um <laughs> but thank style. you guys. And be sure to check out everything that Jay has got going on. As far as my channel, guys, tonight I am dropping Palm Royale episode five. I am dropping Parish season or episode two, honey, because that episode. If y'all aren't watching Parish, get into it. I dropped my Mary and George review yesterday. So a ton of content coming. Uh, yeah, so just stay tuned. As always, I appreciate y'all watching and being here and being active in the comments and for the super chat and all the love. Y'all y'all know I rock with y'all because y'all rock with me. Um, but if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.